and you're live on Dead Radio. Yo, hey everybody. Welcome to another special episode of Dead Radio. What's your main man? Bang, he's dead. Pew. Shout out to the listen, Red. Um, today I've got a special guest. You know, I only deal with special guests. Can't say this enough. What? Um, yeah, today I've got a special guest. I, think, I feel like extremely multifaceted, um, amongst the other things. And I think she has a quite interesting life outside looking in. I know she thinks she does too. She's going to act like she doesn't, but anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't... You know, we don't introduce our guests. She's going to introduce ourselves. Um, so, hi, ma'am. Hi. Why am I saying... Don't they know me? Like, I mean, I maybe mean, they should. Excuse me, like... Perhaps no. they should. I like. am Lerato Singadi Tambo. I am an activist, a marketer, um, an award-winning PR specialist, a uh, creative uh, disruptor and innovator, um, a law changer. She, I mean, <laughs> the law books of the Republic. I'm just an all round just <laughs> laid back black female pushing for black people to, you know, let's modernize Africa, not westernize it. That's just my whole thing. <laughs> Very long intro, but I love the end. I love that we're gonna, we're gonna dive into it because I'm a bit political myself, mm -hmm. a little bit. I love politics. Mm. Um, I feel like we need to love politics. Well, not necessarily need to, but I personally, we'll just get into myself a bit. Like, mm -hmm. I personally, um, I'm, I'm going to be successful, um, which means I need to understand how the politics of this country yeah. work, because to a certain degree, it's going to get to a point where it pinches my pocket. So I need to know the if policies. If it is already, it should be already. 100%, but it may, be, it may get or worse. Or uh, Uga seat. Yeah, tax bracket <laughs> higher than that. Uga <laughs> seat. <laughs> so, um, where are you from and where did you grow up? Oh, I grew up go go to Beko Soweto. Mm -hmm. Single mother. Um, grew up with my cousins. My mom raised us all together. So essentially, we are sisters. Okay. We're a family of five girls in total. I have oh, a younger crazy. sister. Then it's me. Then it's twins. Then no it's sons, mine. Um, hmm? No men. Like no boys. See, Just God really. walks ahead because we're not Latina. <laughs> My mom, God was like, me about you do not deserve Look, we can't get into any that, further. That's so, yeah. like... Ugh. No, we'll circle back. <laughs> yeah. We'll circle back. Yeah. So I grew up with Dube, um, Kosoweto, and it was really strange because as much as Nikki Dula could Dube, I went from, like, grade north, north, north to right. white schools, Okay, you know? So... Right, had, right. Joburg? Yeah. Okay. My mom wanted to keep a tight leash on a girl. So okay. and there was no boarding school, you know. Um, and I grew up a nerd. Like, yes, Nikki Lala Kontle, but my mom was always like, what are you reading? You know, I used so, to read like Reader's Digest and like do crosswords and word searches with my mom's older sister, my aunt, so, who's actually the reason why I'm so smart, you know. Um, that's what I did. If I'm sick, we don't go anywhere. I don't watch TV. I'm listening to 702. Crazy. You know, that's, that's, I started reading at like the age of two or something. Insane. <laughs> that makes sense, though. Yeah, so that's just, I grew up, you know, it, I'm grateful for the way I grew up because I learned the best of both worlds. Right. Like, I would go to freaking school and I'm learning calligraphy, I'm doing piano, I'm doing ballet. I'm doing all these things, but I feel like you know, half the time, like, Kikokasi, I'm being bullied for wearing, being the only girl in my street, a blazer, you know, because back in Kokasi, so there is no blazers. Right. I'm being bullied because I, I'd i rather read than Kilo Lalakos Kaming, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, I don't walk barefoot till this day. I don't walk barefoot, and I was bullied for not walking barefoot because my mom was like, why are you walking barefoot? Like, right. well, I want to go in sleepers, like, you, why are you walking outside barefoot? I don't have time to take you to hospital. I'll go hot or something. So even today, I don't walk barefoot. That's insane. Mm. Which schools do you go to? Which I went to Marion College. Okay. And then I went to Mondial High. Right. And which one would you say shaped you? Both. In which way? Um, Marion College is like a proper Catholic. It's a sister school to St. David's and, all, and Sacred Hearts and stuff. So that was just like very bougie, like, like insanely bougie. And the only reason I left, I left um, 
Marin College was because my father just stopped paying the exorbitant school fees. Right. And my mom was raising five kids on her own. Right. You know, and I was naughty. So she's like, oh, when? Like, like back chatter, weren't you? school fees, sis, Okay. Okay. You know, it, I was naughty, yeah. On the report, they'd say, Lerato is so smart. If she can just, you know, apply herself and, and stop being disruptive. That kind of naughty. Okay. And my mom started getting annoyed with it. So I went to Mondio High and that was like a culture shock for me because I couldn't learn. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I got caught up in that like mess, but it really molded and made me almost not just book smart, but street smart to some degree. Right, As right. well, you know, that's where I learned how to fucking smoke, bunk school. First time I got drunk at bunk school, I went to Aldo's with my homies, Extension 5. Baraka papsak and Kool-Aid. And then what you do is you turn the papsak thingy upside down, you open it, you pour the Kool-Aid in there, you shake it, and then it becomes this like pink, super sweet drink, right? But the thing is, it's still alcohol. You're not drinking a freaking slushy. Right? right. So that was the first time I got drunk. Like, I puked. Rent. Of course, I mean... So, yeah, that's the balance. That's why I'm such a balanced... And then from Mandu, where did you go? Triple A. Okay. What Graduated as a copywriter. AAA? Is that what you've always wanted to do? I was torn between law... Okay. ...and journalism. Okay. But, uh, like, why copywriting? Because um, I've always been... I understand the journalism because, I mean, you've been reading and um, Reader's Digest and whatnot, so you kind of understand... Mm what knowledge is in the books and you know how to articulate it mm. um, in such a way for the average yeah. person to read it. But like, copywriting? Because I'm a creative at heart. That's in my DNA. My mom was like a supermarketer. My father has got like degrees in like music, composing. He's also a lawyer. He's also an economist. Like, so I'm a creative. I think that's just the only thing that's always ever interested me. Right. I just thought law, I was like, ooh, law. It's just, it's a bit long, eh? Right. So I was like, and then my mom wouldn't let me do journalism because it means I'd go to Vits Tech or whatever. Right. I'd like to see the And then my mom's friend, Happy Jingela, who's like quite a stalwart in, in adver South African advertising, was like, you know, she's smart, she's creative, she's a good writer. Explore this thing. And Were you already writing at that point in time? I mean, essays. You know, oh, right, like right. my writing skills have always been quite A grade. Right. Yeah. Okay, cool. Triple A. Then yeah. after triple A. Straight into work. Where did you work? Leo Burnett, an advertising agency. Did you like it? Sound like you didn't. You know what the thing is? Advertising, I left it after that because it wasn't for me. Like, Moya advertising, I don't know if it's different now, but then it was just like so like surf. Like you were fighting. Like I said, for me, I always do something for the betterment of black people. Right. And advertising is just like so naff because they, the people that make decisions or sign off things a lot of the time are not even part of the target market that they've been, that's been spoken to. Right. You know, we all know this thing of, or, you know, sing for your sap. It's just random bullshit like that. Right. And I got fed up. After a year, I got fed up because I was also selling always ultra pads, which is fine, but what the white people thought it was like to be on your period and a black girl wearing a pad was just ridiculous. Right. So I. And then I went into eventing and then PR and it just everything just aligned itself to... So, to, fine, yeah. you at this job, I'm assuming after some... Do you quit? You fired? What? I quit. Why did you quit? I it just was, told Okay, you. it wasn't enough. I'm sorry about that. Fine, you quit, <laughs> what's next? I went into the eventing space. Why, why eventing? Because it seemed like the next thing. Like, a groove. I know what good groove is. Let me get paid to put together groove, essentially. <laughs> That's really what happened. And then um, a very special lady, the late um, Suzette Pretorius from SABC was like, hey, you're a good writer, come try this PR thing. You know, I was hooked up by another amazing marketer, um, Trudy McKay, and that's how I got into PR. Oh. Literally. Like, so I, your I didn't, plan was never to get into PR? No. But, and then you get into PR, and I'm assuming... A great writer, again, because 
you have to write press releases, yes. you have to have interpersonal skills because you have to deal with people and media and, 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 and. So everything worked out in my favor, everything that I've learned, even till today, everything I've learned in my life has equipped me for where I am and where I'm going. Right, cool. You do the PR thing, I'm guessing it's booming. Where are you working at this point in time? Yeah, I worked in a lot of places. I worked at the SABC, then after the SABC, I worked for an agency called, um, I think, Red Flag after that. Mm -hmm. And there, the speciality was around music PR, mm -hmm. right? And events, music events PR and that kind of vibe. And that's where I got to work with like some pretty cool artists as well. Lady Smith Black Mambazo, Mikasa, Pitch Black Afro, like. So that's when you really started getting luck, into the scene. No, I'd always been on the scene because my friends have always been in the scene. Like right. most of the people that I grew up with are either DJs, musicians, actors, actresses, like, you know, so I've always been there. I just didn't want to be a part of it. And that's why I'm not a part of it now. I'm just, you know, in the outskirts. I feel like I get so. what you mean, because when I look at like the generation that you rub shoulders with, mm. especially like your friends, mm. um, they are all people doing something in whatever industry they're in, right? Yeah. And what I mean by doing something is they either spearheading it or they spearheaded it, or they just really did or went to, went against the tide, basically. Yeah. Um, and I find it so fascinating because we don't see that much yeah. in a lot of times now yeah. where a group of people are all doing one thing and they all know each other. I think there's too much just competition right now. Okay. With us, it was, let me give you an example, with like hip hop artists then. If, say, Squatter Camp has a show and, you know, Jab is free, he's gonna go and support the show. And if a song they've done together comes on, he's gonna jump on stage. It's gonna be a good time, we keep it moving. And that was, was. There was just so much support and love and, you know, but now, like, a person will be at a party and your homie's performing the song that you're on and then you just, like, mise. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's just bizarre for me. And I that's, get exactly what you mean. And that's exactly how it is in all the industries right now, especially the creative spaces. Yeah. It's too much competition and not enough collaboration. You're so right, because I see this, you know, um, a very weird video came on the timeline, um, not recently, like maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and it was DJ Spoo's... Um, I think you remember when it rains? Mm. Probably not. And the snippet of the video that was posted is them showing all the different types of people that are now famous or whatever doing something that were in that music video. Like Bonang was there, mm -hmm. um, Trevor Noah was there, like so many different people. Whereby I think to get something like that done now would be such a tough time because now you need to go call Mang Mang's manager here yeah. to approve this mm -hmm. and maybe you feel like it doesn't align with your brand and like you're not gonna go. And it's, it's, I think it's really unfortunate actually because on that note, when we did um, Jabba's video for Futubolo, which is a song about women playing football, um, everyone that on that, on that, huh? That too. <laughs> yeah, everyone on that on that music video was people that I just phoned and like, yo, pull through. There was no Muzi, Nandi, Kuli Roberts, uh, Shashi Naidu. Um, the Manang is also part of it. Am I wrong? No, no, not this one. It was um, Randall Abrams. It was uh, Pabi Muloy. It was Twasa. It was like. So everyone just wanted to put in the helping Yeah, which is, I was just like, guys, can you come shoot a video? What video is it? This is this. Come through. And we had a good time. Right. And literally after that, it was high fives, no invoices, no nothing, because we collaborate, you know? And till this day, there are people that I can call like that and people that know that they can call me for those right. kind of things. You know why I'm nodding? Because I get why now, like, why the conversation I do have sometimes with Sunshine Mm. are the way they are because she, she comes with that energy that you're talking about. You know what I mean? That like, um, dude, just call that person. That person, they wouldn't mind doing it. Um, whereas today it's like... You guys are all like, Ugh. Yo, you asking that person, you know you got to jump over in and out of loopholes and to them it's you owing them a favor, them owing you a favor, but it's not necessarily an act of them wanting to do. You know what the thing is? Nah, never can ring. Right. Um, beyond that... 
I'm beyond Hunzeng. I don't care who, who I mean, CEO, CFO, whoever. I've got my stripes in the game. I mean, I you know? know that because, I mean, I kind of were meant to do something for you and I didn't. And kind of like, okay, you put me on the sideline. Not mm. necessarily sideline per se. No, no, and that was the, 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 the lukewarm. Yes. <laughs> you know, but I get wrong thing because I feel like I've worked so hard and I've, I really have worked. People think, like, it looks so glamorous. I've had sleepless nights. Like, I've worked to the bone to be where I'm at. It was never handed to me. It wasn't something that I inherited. I worked hard. Right. So if you don't give me the respect of the person I am in the industry and what I have done and what I'm doing and what I'm still going to do, then there's no need for me to have the conversation with you. Because right. it means you don't respect me and my work and my craft. Then why would I respect you? Right. Let's leave it alone. I'm not, one thing I do not do is beg. Right. It means it wasn't meant to be. Let's call it a day. I'll see you at Groove somewhere. That's it. And it probably also means we don't really respect each other like that because why would you want me to beg you if you did respect Exactly. Me? Right. Yeah. Well, I get it. I mm. get it. Okay, PR. Mm. Um, you worked at a lot of companies. Mm. Cool. Um, you're award-winning PR specialist. Mm. Fine. Um, at what point does it lead towards that? For me, it was just like not being afraid to fail, to be honest, because... Uh -huh. If I was afraid to fail, I wouldn't have done great things with the teams that I've worked with, which means that I would have just done what every other PR practitioner in the country is doing. Okay. Right? And the space I chose to excel in has been lifestyle and entertainment PR because as a creative, I feel like other creatives get it. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, brand managers don't always get it. Yep. You know, the client doesn't always get it, but a lot of the time the talent does. And all my great work, has been work where I've been given leeway to just do whatever it is I think is best, and it's never failed. I can tell you that 100% right now. Give me an example, because I'm still trying to low-key understand what your work could be, right? And I'm gonna ask this why, I'm, I'm gonna tell you why I'm asking this, is because from my perspective, a PR specialist is basically someone that just sends out press releases to mm. people. Um, and that's the worst thing because, like, that's the there's so many other ways to get PR. Right. You just need to think creative. I personally hate press releases. Okay. I don't send them. I don't approve them. I, I, why? 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 What are you saying? What are you saying? Why must the question is always why must I care? So, what do you prefer? Put me in situations where I want to talk about the thing. Okay. Don't make, send me a fucking press release in images. Make me an example. Okay, here's a good example. Let me think. One of my favorite clients that I've worked with in, in my career has been G.H. Moore, right? Okay. The Champagne. Yep. And when they were, you know, by the time I started, me and Rory started working with them, they were a champagne brand that people kind of knew. We know you both. But it was even pronounced wrong. Everyone was like, ma'am, ma'am. It didn't have, it didn't have a voice. It didn't have a look and feel. It didn't have text. Neil and Jay could have been a Jay C. LaRue or something, right? Right. And we're like, we're champagne drinkers. What would we want to do to make us excited about this brand? Right. And that's when we were able to do like an overhaul. Right, we had to like a client really trusted us, and I feel blessed and highly favored for that. I mean, we we overturned the what was the Jane we met, which was obviously surf ghetto, just like everything <laughs> yeah. that Africa's richest race shouldn't be. Right, right. We took that, it became the Sun Met. It became the most coveted ticket on the social calendar. Okay. Once we were done with it, we had the same vault come through uh -huh. because he had partnered with Mum and. He had his own signature bottle, uh -huh. right? We launched the rosé, he came through. And we just created a whole lifestyle around champagne drinking. And again, it's because I only do things that if I'm the consumer or the person who's supposed to receive this, what would I want to do? Right. You know, what is the consumer journey? What, 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 what would I want to receive? What would I want to drink? What kind of music would I want, you know? Right. And so the, 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 the Met and everything around it was specially curated. I don't use the word curated loosely, like literally every single thing, right? And for me, the culmination of that was begging and fighting <laughs> for Somizi <laughs> to have his own limited edition signature champagne bottle, which had never been done. Right. It had never been done. The only person was the St. Bolt. Yes. But Somizi, a black, gay, 
African man were able to fight and, and, and say why it is important for him, for the culture, for the country, for the continent. And we did it. And it was amazing. And it's never been done since. It was never done before. And yeah, I all because you. we fought and believed in something. So the we went modernizing, not westernizing. Yes. I totally hear what you mean. So basically, simply put, your way of PR is active. It's creative. It's creative like and active. Like, because I feel like, because I get a lot of PR things that I can't subscribe out of because I don't know how they got my email address and I just keep getting... Tell them, you tell them you're spam, they're spamming you. Maybe three A4 pages of information no, and I don't read I don't it. I just like read that. the heading and I don't read it. You know and that's I mean? all it should be. The heading, paragraph say two, links, dinepe, boom. I, I totally get it. And that's for people who couldn't come to the thing that is that we can talk about. Right, so we need to have something to yeah, talk about first water, and foremost. Please, not, don't invite me. The speech, and just, not leave me, hey? Like, I'm right. fine. Okay, I, I have get no you. shortage of things to do. So, when you say award winning, what, what it was? Oh my gosh. Um, so for the Sumizi thing, we won a PRISM, mm -hmm. which is the highest um, PR accolade okay. in the country. Uh, went to Cannes for, okay. the, for that campaign. Uh, we've won Global Best Practice, we've won um, Golden uh, Best Practice for one of our clients, which was Nest Cafe. We've won um, the Sports Awards the, for creative sponsorship or whatever for the Mets. They, they are quite... I hear you. And also I'm a Lifetime Award summer recipient on behalf, <laughs> behalf of my husband, so... Right. So now, the awards came last. <laughs> okay. okay, so obviously now moving from that, um, at what point, because I feel like this is also important, mm. even though it's not necessarily about you, but it's part of your story. Mm -hmm. um, did you and Jabba meet because you're doing his PR? No. Or it was just way before that was way even Way before. I didn't even like the guy. Why? Because it's like, give him a rapper, like, like you know. <laughs> The thing is, all my guy friends are rappers. Right. You know, they were like... You don't need anyone uh, any No, it was added. just like, mm, guy, no. <laughs> nothing, it was nothing he did, nothing he said, nothing. Nikhil and Jin, Nikhil and like, I was happy with my friends, you know, drinking Black Label beer, like... You're just you doing know, wearing, relaxing. Yeah, Skakaparala Stone Cherry, you know? Right. Just in my vibes. Cool, so it had absolutely nothing to do with what you do? No. Um, at what point do you guys, what, what point do you start liking him then? Let me say that, because you didn't like him and... I wasn't, not that I didn't like him, I was just never romantically interested in him. Right. He was a great guy. Cool. And my mom actually was the first person trying to hook us up. It's like, no. For real? So she just kept booking this guy for all her work gigs. <laughs> Inviting me, <laughs> hoping. <laughs> I was see you told her like, yo, this homie. No. So she just did it? She's like, La Tuanelana. What? On God. At La Tuanelana. I'm like, you gotta pay me my money. She's like, I'm just saying. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Way before. Way before, that's so insane. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I'm assuming fine, you guys like each other. One point. And do you do his PR at any point? Do you start? I, it, that kind of just happened because there were certain things that I wasn't happy about. Like, just the way... You know, the thing is, I look at an artist, uh, everything as a brand. Okay. So the same brand solution I'd find for a martini company is how I'd look at you as a brand. Okay. I, w I don't look at just like, oh, it's a person. So no, you're a brand, you have problems. How do I fix it? What's the best way to fix it? What makes sense? What's it to you as a brand to help fix those things? All right. So that's what happened. It was just like, oh, let's fix this, let's fix this. And then he was like, oh, please fix more. Fix and then I fixed more. And then we're dating. Then he was like, and then it snowballs. And then now you're just doing everything. Basically. I actually stopped working for two years because he would not let me work. Insane. With anyone or anything else. That's so crazy because I mean, I remember that you appointed me um, mm. when I started styling him. Yeah. He was actually the first person I styled 
um, on that level mm. of styling because it was more personal. It was more on a much more personal level. Yeah. Um, and how you guys appointed me was just like, yo, okay, we need this. Today's Friday. We need this on Sunday. Yeah. Can you do it? And I was taking chances. I won't lie. Taking chances because, hey, dude, it's fucking double HP. What the fuck? Mm. So I mean, starstruck, like, okay, cool. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. And I did it. And then that was also a snowball effect. Like, yo, dude, mm. you can do mm. this so well. So mm. we think we should do this and more and more and more and more. Kind of get what you're going. Fine. Yeah. Now, what do you do when you stop working with him? I go back to my career. Because the thing is, I, I, I'm not made to be a housewife. Right. I'm not, I can't be tamed. Like, like I'm a free fucking spirit, like, you know? And I, I have my own career aspirations. And, right. and I've worked hard. I wasn't gonna about to let my trajectory be, you know, because of love or, you know what I'm saying? So right. I, kept, I kept working, I mean, I worked with Rory, and then after that, I became the GM for South Africa for um, humans, which is a influencer marketing. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so I led that ship, and then I just, you know, I burnt out. Okay, in which way? Just did too much. Like I just did too much, and it was also post Jabba's passing, and I was just burnt out. I just could not anymore. Right, and and. What did you do to kind of not necessarily get over your burnt out, but I how did, did you nothing. surpass it? I did nothing for seven months. At I'd all. also lost my mom around that time, so I did not, nothing, nothing. Just stayed in bed. Well, not obviously. Like, like that, I'd wake up, scratch my balls, <laughs> have a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> have a cigarette. Like, I did nothing. Like, Crazy. even that December was so foreign to me because it's the first December, maybe in like 15, 16 years, where I didn't have back-to-back -back things to do. Because if it wasn't work, I was on the road to jam. Like, that's just what my life was for years, you know? I didn't know what to do. I'm like, what y'all do? <laughs> Got to be like, what do you guys do, you know? <laughs> so I drank, because it's parties, it's whatever, but I needed that time. Right. And then when I felt like, okay, I feel better, I can, I feel like I'm ready to work again, you know, because right. my heart and my mind need to be clear for me to do what is right for me. And then, like, I prayed about it, I patted about it, I patted a lot. Okay. I pray a lot. Why? Why? Why do you patter? Why do you patter? Mm. Give me like Wi-Fi to my ancestors, no? Actually, I explain to people what pattering is, because ah, yeah, 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 they yeah. might not know, what do you Aye. mean? Young... Follow this link <laughs> on Google, the link here. Uh, It'll give you everything. But it's, it's, it's basically me connecting Libadimu Baga, you know? Right. When you partner, you don't pray to Badimu, you talk to them. Right. You only pray to God. Right. Badimu are just executors of God's things for you. Right. In my soil, give you foot soldier. They go in, you know. Fix so, it up. Anyway, I pray, I pray in Pasha a lot. See, you did it. That was so simple. I get it. I get it. You didn't know before? Of course I did. I just... Being that guy. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kupa Rifin. Um, it's just a random hand. <laughs> yeah, and I did, and I was like, okay, God, I think I'm ready to get back into the workforce. Show me what that next step is. Right. And I chilled. I marinated. Ah. Two weeks later, I was signing a contract for work. <laughs> Crazy, just like yeah, that. Yeah. And who was it with? Um, or rather what? Mm? Or rather what? As the senior marketing manager Africa for MTV, MTV Base and BET. Crazy, and what does it Well, prior to that, I was Comedy Central and Nickelodeon. What does that entail, though? What? Like, I'm the marketer. I. I doing strategies, coming up with ideas, creative ways, and it's a lot across all medias and all mediums. And how is that for you? Is that what you wanted? Is that what you're talking to the ancestors for? No, I said, you guys know my heart's desires, you know? You're right. Like, I'm very, very um, clear and intentional when I pray. Okay. I'm very clear, Mudim. I would like a red Ferrari, 
and I will be clear about what it Black is. Black interior, you, you white understand? rims. Because you can't pray and be vague. Hey, God, please help me. What? No, 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 no. You need to be deliberate. Sort of clear. I'm going to this, 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 please. Just get me there. And then once I've done that, everything I do, I consciously ask, does it get me to that goal or somewhere close to it? I wanna, I like how you do that because it's almost like giving an open-ended statement mm. that you want to finish for you. But that's why I was saying to you, like my career, you asked her and then, and then, and then. Everything just happens for a reason. Right. You get me? Everything. This is where I'm at now. It's amazing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a leader in my field. My peers, like Rudin Jano, like, like you were saying, like my peers and I, we are captains of industry. We can do whatever. We're still wild. We're still young. We've got money now to misbehave and go places and buy things and, 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 and. But for me personally, I haven't even scratched the surface. And I know that. I can feel Kiyutramo. I feel it. I know. You know? It's only the beginning. Yeah. And what are your career aspirations then, if you say it's only the beginning? For me, it's, it's, it's to be, to use all my knowledge that I've gotten over the years to bring about change in women's lives on the continent. Okay. Yeah. In which sense? In all senses? In all senses. In right all now, I'm, I've gone to the High Court, Supreme Court. I'm going to the Kong Court, which is the highest caught in the line, fighting for women's rights, fighting for black widows' rights in this country. Mm -hmm. I'm already in the law books. Concord just solidifies it, you know? And What rights are these? That is, there, is there many of them? It's basically the right that you, as a black woman that has mainly done customary marriage, mm -hmm. your marriage must be recognized. Oh, shit. Yeah, I just... I'm yeah. a big deal, nigga. Skampona Kili, Kili like drippy and cute. I'm a motherfucking big deal. That's so crazy because, I mean, I had that conversation with my dad. He's like, yo, you know this thing is a, um, it's a law now that, yo, if this... Ask your dad about me. Yo, I'll do that. I'll no, be... not, a, not like ask your daddy. No, like ask your dad <laughs> Look, I will. about me. Yeah, so... I find it, it, so Oh, are you serious, dude? Because that low. Can someone like, pull up Google some shit? Like, wow, yeah. that's so insane. Like, what did it take for that law to get relooked, though? Me fighting. Me not giving up. And were you fighting to be recognized? Yes. Um, that even though we didn't necessarily walk down the aisle, but the thing is, we're black. Akuna aila, akuna rokwe white. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I don't need to do all that shit for me to be told or to be accepted as my husband's wife. Right. I cannot say white. In fact, we didn't care for that. The only reason we we're going to do that was for our mothers because my mom and his mom were the eldest. So you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I cannot say And the moment they tried to dismiss that, I took great offense, not just for myself, but my mother. Because that's what a traditional wedding is. It's not about... It's the coming together of families, coming together of ancestors, coming together of, you know what I'm saying? Lineage is not one. We all one. We understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I need a white dress. That doesn't matter. You know like, what I'm saying? What do you mean? And not even just that. Just like, you can't call me someone's wife until that person dies. Suddenly, I'm not. Right. I'm not crazy. I'm not delusional. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, and I don't, right, I, right, I, right, right. I wish it was different. I wish I didn't have to do this. I wish I was cool with my in-laws. I wish like... I wish it was easy, but it's not. But then I understand that ugh, everything that I've gone through has equipped me to this moment. Like the reason why, despite like I've been bullied, like I was top five most Google people in this country for a year. You know what I'm saying? Crazy. Like I'm used to public bullying. You know why I don't take it to heart? Because years ago I was on Big Brother and they bullied me. So I learned then, ah, fuck. That's how it works. Ah, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? That shoot. equipped me for that. You know, all the PR work, writing press releases, you know what, that equipped me for the interviews and the media slander that I need to deal with. Right. Back then, it just seemed like something stupid and futile. Right. But Mudimo walks ahead. Like, yes. How about a short pen, how about He knows exactly what he's doing. Right. So I can no longer fight and say like, oh God, why me? Why, why not me? 
That's what Keenan said to me one day. It's like, ah, bro, like, don't be sad. Because if not you, who? Who's going to do this? If you don't do who's going who's gonna to do this? It's you, bro. Insane. And then we drank a shot and carried on grooving. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I'm there. It's like, I have this tattoo written in Mark II, right? right? It's from the alchemist. It means it is written. Right. And that's what it is. It is. I'm a, I'm a passenger in, the, in God's Uber. Right. The way it goes is where it goes. But One kiss and thing. You know when you call it specifically an Uber black, I guess we can say it. Once we can have a in. You don't look around and check his GPS and open one more phone and you're just carrying on, right? right? And that's how I feel about God. Right. That's what I feel about God. By Dimo are the drivers, Mudimo is the GPS. I just need to just chill. I totally get you. Mm. So you said, uh, what's his? Hey, Sada. Big brother. Oh, babe, I've lived a very colorful life. <laughs> like, big brother? Twice. You didn't mention that, though. How come you did not Because it doesn't that? matter. How does it not matter? You're a big brother. Twice. Uh -huh. Ask your mom about me. What's up? What's up? Guys, mothers. I didn't even realize mothers fucked with me like that until every time someone comes like, yo, my mom fucking loves you. <laughs> and I was smoking, drinking. I was like the anti-African woman. That's why everyone came for me. I'm like, guys, I'm a modern African woman. We are like, this is the reality of what African women are. Right. Nothing that about all those things says I'm disrespectful. But we're still there. That hasn't changed. But these are just my life choices, all right? You know? Let me go have a fag and with the fags and hang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you should be a rapper. <laughs> so how did you get a big brother Africa? I'm assuming you applied, obviously. It but was, a, it was actually a day between me and Sunshine to see how far we could go. What? You know a joke that goes too far? Yeah. My life has been a series of those kind of things. Big brother. <laughs> no, so, it's, a, it's a long story. Look, I hear you. I don't lie. I'm pretty fascinated. Extremely fascinated. Wow. Uh, damn. Kiko Pashote Tequila. Don Julio. Reposado. I'm being honest. <laughs> you should be a rapper. You got an rapper vibe to Yo, you. Yo, have real. you not heard? Guys, look for me at Sam Rowe. No, man, get out of here. <laughs> no, in, in Guys, do you think I can be with a rapper for 10 mother a decade? So you got some and buzz. not learn a damn thing? So you got some buzz. You know what you say? <laughs> you know what? Just put me in a motherfucking studio. I'm not a hip hop show. Be like, yo, give us a freestyle. That's not a hip hop show. I'm on songs. <laughs> what are you? I'm mean? the queen of ad libs. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sam Rowe, ask about me. <laughs> you know? They pay me in fucking Hennessy and champagne and tequila sometimes. You get it, you're But sometimes, oh, understand? Give me to leave. The royalty check, no my can only 25 rand. But just know it's I'm there. I'm a registered hun. Okay. Cool. I was gonna go back to career aspirations. Let's let's Are we there? Okay, yeah. That's where we were. Like I don't remember. What your, yeah? What your career aspirations are. Like what I told you. We touched on it a little to bit. To change the to change the lives of African women. Now, using the knowledge that I've learned over the years. Right now. I wanna ask something. Mm. It's gonna be a bit controversial, maybe. Or maybe against the tide, right? Mm. <laughs> like I know why African women, because you are an African woman, mm. but why is there no place for an African man in any of that? I'm there curious. is no place for you. There is no place for what you. Does because that even mean? all along there's been nothing but a place for you. There's no there's Joe, right now. In which sense though? Like we can't like say there that is no one what I mean, do you mean? In the apartheid, I mean, the African man wasn't necessarily... A, we didn't have a place. Okay. And then where were the black women that time? You also didn't have a place. We were worse off. But we're talking about places here. We're not no, talking about he, positions that's of why the place. Can, that's like, ultra, ultra. It's like saying to someone, yo, like, I don't eat seafood. Oh, but why don't you eat fish? <laughs> like... <laughs> no, I'm specifically... <laughs> choosing because as black women around the world and African women, we are the most forgotten. Okay. We are at the bottom of every list. Anything in life, in life. 
Imagine you're dealing as a young black man, you're dealing with being on the back foot for so many things. Now add being a female onto that, a black female. Trust me, we do not have it easy in any shape or form. The law is designed to oppress us right. as women. So many things in society are designed to oppress us. Even our own black men are oppressing us. GBV is at the highest it's ever been. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When you wake up in the morning, you must thank God because your husband could have killed you in your sleep. When you drive out, the security guy could have raped you when you came in. When you drive, go to Robotong, some guy can come and hijack you and make you a sex slave. Or tell a Pedro, the attendant, could do something. You go to check as you walk out with your plastics, some motherfucker could do something. You get in an Uber, you're lucky to get home. We live in a constant state of fear. Right. You get me? I get we you. live in a constant state of fear. And the thing is, those we are fearing the most are our black men. Right. Y'all are who we fear the most. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. That's 100% true. But do you think it would be any different if, let's say, we're in a country where the majority isn't black men or black people? Like, let's say... Because um, I, I want to challenge like your idea of saying the black man has been the guy. Not necessarily the guy, but the guy when it comes to black women and black men. What do you mean the guy? What's the guy? Give me the guy. <sighs> what does the guy mean? The, the place, the position that we just spoke about, though. The perpetrator. Yeah, not the perpetrator. We're talking about positions. And you said okay, that... Let, black... let me just answer you before yes. you go any further. Do you know where I'm, go where I'm going? Yeah, though? I cannot have a country where there's less... And I'm not... I don't want to do any hypotheticals right. right now, to be honest. I'm dealing with my reality. Yeah, in Denmark, they've got less... So women... I'm not in Denmark. Right. I'm not in Denmark. So you're a realist. You're trying Kimo to right now, the Yes, presence. I don't want to live in a... You know... One of the best relationships I've ever had in my life that, apart from my mom and my sister and whatnot, that watered my, my fire. Mm -hmm. Actually, that ignited my fire. It's a petrol mulong. 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 In put fire in me was the relationship I had with Zinzi Mandela, right? Right. Like... I learned so much and she broke down so much walls that I have and most of them around fear, Right. you know? And she's like, I see so much of my mother in you because you're not only beautiful, but you're not, once you let go of that fear that's holding you back, you're gonna be amazing, you're gonna be incredible. You're gonna be everything that we need. Right. You know, so I'm not scared. Like, not only fear God, guys. Like, and the dark. <laughs> <laughs> you're afraid of the dark? I don't like the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say you're afraid? Are you afraid of the dark? I feel uncomfortable. In okay. The dark. <laughs> so it's just like, the thing is, when the worst has happened to you, and you know what rock bottom feels like, mm -hmm. but when I go bikini bottom where SpongeBob lives, yes. when you know what it's like there, there's nothing further. The only way is up. And that's how I feel. All these losses that I've experienced post, all those things, Joe, it's, it's, it sucks bad. And I grieve every day, hectically. But it's inevitable for all of us, number one. And there's a reason. I have to believe that also I'm living for nothing. Right. It's all for something. There is a reason. And a reason bigger than me that I can't even, it's so big, I can't even begin to fathom. Right. And I don't doubt it. People can call me crazy, they can call me whatever, I do not doubt it. I got this far in my career because I listened to God and I just went. I never knew that it was gonna be a whole domino effect that leads to, that equips me for all of this. Even so me saying I'm, fight, I'm gonna fight for women using the skills that I have. Earlier I was saying, oh, there's no way Musadi 0965 is gonna tell me, Hore, was going to write laws about my life. Yeah, Ma'am, well, our problems are different. Completely. Our problems are, you can't even use the right emoji. What's the problem But there's some weird emoji for something as serious, then it's like awkward in the family group. You know what I, I mean? Think I think that's actually what's happening in politics right now. The state Absolutely. of the country is that there's just a bunch of old people that still want to run things their way. There's no succession plan. There's the nothing. world has changed. Like the world has changed completely. Um, I know we talk about this a lot. 
you talk about low shedding, you hate it, you want us to mm. go against, not necessarily go against the system, but go against the system and find other ways than actually just complaining on Twitter. Because um, mm. you told me you were over that, that you don't want to do that anymore. Like, you actually want to actively... Do work. something. I don't know what it is. I really don't know. I'm not going to say some dumb shit like, oh, let's go to it. Like, it's not practical. Right. All of this stuff, we've done it before. And you know, they say um, stupidity or being an idiot is doing the same thing and hoping for a different result. 100%. And that's why right now I feel like we're stupid. Right. Myself included. Because we do the same thing over and over and over again, mm -hmm. expecting a different result. Right. I don't know what the answer is. I, I really don't. But you're for it. As long as it's not... As long as it's rapid. As long as it's typical forwards, ever, backwards, never. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. where I'm at. Totally. I, I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. I'll tell you why, right? I actually just realized that you could literally um, live a simple life and stay where you want to do, stay and just live how you've always wanted to live. I think as people, we kind of attach the same successions that we have or that we want to how everyone else should want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want a big house. I expect you to also want a big house. Because it's something. It's not what you want. Because it's something. It's not what you want. Me, in 2018, not only did I lose my husband, I lost my stepson. They took him away from me. And I lost everything. Like, I didn't even have a teaspoon. Only the clothes on my back. I had nothing. I had, guys, when I say, I only had the stuff that was in my mom's house that I've been leaving. I had nothing. So everything I have now, every single Damn, thing, so start, is like, shit friends. that I started from zero. You know, it was, it was and I could have, I could have taken shortcuts. It was very easy to. Like I what, just though? didn't what want to. Like, you have taken? like in my fam like when I moved into my apartment, the only thing my mom bought me, and because there's no motherfucking way I'm sleeping on the floor after having a fucking king size extra length bed with my husband, <laughs> you know, she bought me brand new extra plush king size extra length bread with like 800 thread count Egyptian cotton sheets. Like she made me feel like it's gonna be fine. I guess this is what you're used to. This is what you worked for. You can do it again. I could have, I could have gone to sponsors, to this, to that, but after being called a gold digger so many times, right? Mm -hmm. I, I was kind of like, are, are they right? Like, oh damn. Could it be right? No, but I know what I know. You know what I'm saying? Gaslighting. Right. And I started from. Scratch. That's insane. From zero. Like, so dog, when I said, Nikia next door, Nikia, I used to live next to a garage. Every day, I'd go and buy a pack of ice, put it in the sink so, like, my milk and all that shit doesn't go off. Damn. Yeah, nigga. So, from the bottom up, for real, for real. Ah, uh, nah, and happily so. Happily so. Happily so. I miss my home. I, like, haven't been to my home in five years. I, I don't know. People are thinking I'm out here spending my husband's money. My husband's estate has been frozen since 2018. I don't have a single cent from my husband. So the fuck? <laughs> Hi, ma'am. Um, I'm going to try bleep the alcohol things on the thing I'm about. In? Like alcohol names that you mentioned, that you're going to mention? No, like a... I have to bleep it. No, you mean like a margarita or like Don Julio? The second one. Yes. No. Yes. Beep. <laughs> we out here. <laughs> oh, man, I'm shy. You came here saying you're shy. I'm shy. <laughs> no, you're I'm not. I'm stunned. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you do on a, normally, like, on a daily basis? Like, what's your routine? Like, what do you do? Like, do you wake up, work? Because you don't definitely seem like that's what you do. Why? Because it's like you're cool. No, dude. I look like what? Gabloma. Oh. Smoke it, wake up and smoke a fucking bomb. I low key pass, like, remember we like parked behind each other? Yeah. Like, the moment I leave and I'm like, oh, she's, she, she, yeah. But you know what it is? Because it's the Uber plague. I don't need to drive. Off okay, oh, one. sorry. Please. Sorry. I mean, that's not a bad thing as well. No, no, it is. You're making me seem like I'm a fucking. 
Mitch. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, I wake up in the morning and my routine is fucking sucks now because normally it was, I wake up, have some coffee, make a coffee, sit outside, you know, take some break, fresh air, check the news, check the emails, check the socials, shower. Right. Huh? Live your thing, live it up. Yeah, no, like just like diligence. Get lots of I might be walking into a firestorm where I, I know, you know, I need right. to, to like, you know, check emails, check my diary, so that maybe I'm late. I'm, you know, then I go back in the house. I just pull out whatever I'm gonna. I don't know anything. It ring. It covers the necessary bits. Right. Pull that out. Take a shower. Get dressed. Get into my car. Put on a playlist and go to work. Crazy. And make people's dreams come true for a few hours, then come back home. Stop so enjoying your life. Yeah. That's good. That's brilliant. Thank you. I feel after, you. That's like just after rock bottom, there's nothing else you have to go out. <laughs> For real. And I just feel blessed, man. Like, more than anything, like, yeah, my career is great. Like, I get to do cool things with cool people and meet cool people and like, but I'm just grateful for, for life and all the people around me that are positive influences and just good people, you know, not right. just good to me, but good to other people, right. you know, I'm grateful for that because those are the people that I can call her on you. Right. You know, those are the people that have never left my side, even when I was like being pulled through hot calls with lies. Like those are the people that were not embarrassed to be around me because they know me, right? So that's what I'm, I'm very grateful for that. And for people like strangers, Joe, that are just not assholes, Right. you know, like, and there are strangers that are assholes, but those are the ones that will never come up to you in public and say to you, I think you're a dick. gold digging hussy. Yeah. Look what you did They're to just... your husband. Look what you did today. Never, not once. Never, ever, 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 ever. They all hide behind a keyboard. You know, to the thugs. Yeah. That's where they are. You know? And I'm always like, yo, just pull up and tell me that to my face. I'm not going to say I'm going to fight you. But if you've got the balls to say something so cruel, just tell me to come my and face. tell me to my face. They, they, they can't. They can't. Because they know it's evil and terrible. And they just want to make someone else's life horrible. And I don't care. Why must people be... Why about what so? It's work, ne? <laughs> it definitely is. It's insane. It's work. Like, now, I was saying, like, all the women, and it was women mostly, they were coming for me about fighting for my rights as a wife. I'm like... Girl, <laughs> not once, not once. Post box alone, I saw I bought something like a letter. You don't have been chosen. Ow. I was talking about Rukupa, Rukupa save the date, uh, meeting request. Are you joking? It's always those hands that will come for me. Always those hands. And that's, that's, that's on facts. That's just how it's going. I was talking about dress. <laughs> but you want to come for me, Miss Nan? I don't think so. Okay? You haven't been chosen, you come for me. stripes. Now I've got stripes. I'm a, what is it, five star general? You know what I'm saying? Five stars. Five star general. That's <laughs> who I is. I get you. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a quick question. Top five quizzes, so five questions. They're really so simple, dude. Honestly. Trust me, it's a new segment. Trying something new, you know. Eleventh <laughs> best city in the world. Eleventh. Yeah. That Eleventh. Make, that makes it even easier because it's so. These questions are based on South Africa. Yeah. See, you, your question was like eleventh best city in the world. Yeah. It cannot be Johannesburg. Cannot be Cape Town. Oh, why not? Johannesburg. I mean. <laughs> 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 and, and Cape Town, because then that survey is done by white people. Oh, what makes you say that? Because Cape Town is only great for white people. 100%. And for us, December and out, those peak seasons where they're friendly to blacks and, and our money. Right. Mm. So what, you think those stands are invalid? Not necessarily invalid, but... I'm saying, I know they're valid for white people. I'm just saying that, for it to be uh -huh. number 11 in the world, it is not by black People. Same. That's even white Europeans, even, I think. <laughs> yeah, because of the exchange rate. They love it. I saw some video online where this guy's talking about going to the best steak place in South Africa. And, and it's it like $20. It costs them nothing. Yeah, no. So, yeah, it's, it's Cape Town and it's... 
I don't know, Marie Claire UK. <laughs> okay, did you register to vote? I've been registered. You have to register again. I did. Okay. But the one? No, I trust okay. you. I know you want to vote. I'm flat out lying. I've been registered. I didn't think I needed to re register. But that's a quick thing. Airport, like, I'm definitely a voter. Yeah, I've voted since when I could. F These are actually the first elections not voting with my mom. Right. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I'm not going to say who we voted for, anything along those lines. But. <laughs> who is he making merch for? Which political party is wearing dead? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, don't say that. The red brigade. Yo, I can't say anything, dude. Oh, but you are, though. It's not like that. No, it's not. <laughs> well, well. It's not, dude. I need a drag. It's, look, it's nothing like that. I can't just... Um, but why did you bring that up then? If it's not something you know, you can't. What, registering to vote? No, after that, I'm not saying who we must vote for, but why would you start that in the have a, I was going to comment somewhere there because we no all comment. know who not to vote for. Who? I can't make that comment. <laughs> <laughs> but we all know. <laughs> like it's written. What do you mean? Where is it written? It's written. You know it's written. I know you know, you just want to be controversial. <laughs> it's written, you know it's written, written though. Written where? It's just written, you know it's written. I know you know. Where's it written? I What's written? Where? Bro. Brav. Bro. Bro. I know you know. Where is it written? It's just written. Where? Bro. Brav. You know, after this conversation, <laughs> ask this question that, we, that, that I just mentioned. <laughs> Who are we not voting for? Yeah. Trust me. You Who are we not get voting for? So no, well. tell me now. Who are we not voting for? It's, ri it's written I way. Bro, we just know. I can't say it. We, we just know. No, I'm not going to do that. You know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, what do you mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you don't care. Next question. <laughs> Who's the minister of arts and culture? Oh, um, Zizi Kotwa. Well done, well done. I, I was mean, grieving with him the other day. <laughs> I would have thought you were going to say something negative because, I mean, many of us don't like. Hey, Nakit, I was grieving with him. Azankari will be a fave, so like we go to Brian <laughs> Shaw, like fair. he braids my. No, I was just grieving with him. Just fair enough, fair enough. Fan? Of? Him? Or his work, rather? I'm not a fan of any minister of arts and culture in this country because I feel like they don't do anything for the arts and culture. Right. So whether him, his predecessors. All the same. Mm. Good answer. Um, who is the first black woman that was on commercial radio in South Africa? Go away, bring me a glass. <laughs> huh? Oh, that you were told? No. Was that the note? I say a bottle. Oh. But for now, it'll do. <laughs> I can, I, then I cut it down to, to try and save budgets. <laughs> but, um, damn. I was about to say something about that. The first black woman on commercial the, radio. Yes. Can you give me a clue? I don't think I can. Yes, you can. If it was 30 seconds, no, let's skip out the question. I'm never inviting you to any games night, bro. Or don't, oh, don't be on person. my team. Give me a clue. It starts with the R. Oh, no. It needs to be for the bottle, right? Not for the... Not for the no, this is fine. It's fine. It's fine, thank you. Yeah. Babe, I'm just finishing off this meeting. I'm coming. Okay. I'm finishing off this meeting. I'm coming. Shabbat. I'll come sort it out. <laughs> Yes, I'm coming now. Like literally three minutes. I'm downstairs. Cool. Okay, Chef. It's fine. I'll come sooner. Don't worry. Okay, can we just finish here, my sister? I, I, the, the guy needs to leave for the airport soon. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, yeah. It starts with an R. Yes. And then? Ah, uh, damn. How do I describe this person? Is name and surname? Yes. Okay. I, I, I'm going to have to say it to you. Like, it's just surname? too much. It, it, I don't even know how to describe this person. Like, besides what I just, besides the question. But that's not describing, that's a question. Exactly. Yeah. That's, what, that's exactly what I mean. Like, Give me a clue. If it's 30 seconds, what would you do? It would have been something I would be able to, you So know, do it now. I can't. Why? Because 
All I know is the question. What radio station was it? Do I know this person? No. I don't know this person. This is like years ago, dude. The first black woman on South African radio. Okay, who is it? Rafila Moto. I, uh, okay. Moloto. Okay, no, I don't know her. Like, That's great to know, though. I'll yeah, remember that. Mm -hmm. I mean... Keep it moving. Next. Because <laughs> I... Look, what really how do I describe that? Okay, next. Okay, cool. That's it. We're towards the end of the is second. That, no, I got all of them right except one. Kind I'm of fucking soda. smart, huh? Oh, one of 30 Actually. seconds. Actually. No, let's... let uh, my Bob. Yes, you're right. Uh, mm -hmm. All of them, honey. But, I mean, the Cape Town one, I get your point. I get your point. from a pres yeah, yeah, no, I got the answer right. It's just... You did. Who did the survey? I get you. God bless. You're right. Mm -hmm. Cool. We're at the end of the segment. <laughs> oh, not the show? The show. End of the segment, the show. Like oh. I told you, I'm a bit... What? Happy? Bear with me. I can't necessarily say what, but I'm a bit... You know? It is written. I can't describe <laughs> it. I'm a bit white. Ah, uh, who Like I'm saying. Trading water. What then? Anyway. Um, what's your word of the day? My word of the day? Yes. You, what's the word that matters? Like, what's the oh, word of the day to you? Oh, what, what's the word? Of the day to you, but it doesn't necessarily have to say to mean me, for yeah. today. But the yeah. word for the day is don't be a beast, be lacquer. Cool. <laughs> That's my life, like, right? Yeah, just, just be a lacquer oak, a lacquer hand, like, scarpor. You know? Don't be, don't do things to Tampusuri at you. No, just be nice and be kind and <laughs> I get mind you. your business. And, you know what I'm saying? And drink some water. <laughs> this, is, this is like <laughs> water adjacent. <laughs> um, okay, guys, thank you so much. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to <laughs> Team Deb for this tote. You know, I love totes. I actually collect totes. You've seen my robust collection, some of it. Guys, the quality, let me tell you something. Wait. Okay. I can definitely take this to, like, customs. Smells great. Oh, not a surprise on the inside! Baby! <laughs> Guys, the stage just keeps getting... I'm so glad I came. I came. So, guys, I'll give you... I'll, I'll be posting a review. At least I've got the AirPods and whatnot. I don't know how to put it on. Because you guys are too hard. You gotta be smooth, dude. There we go. There you go. Let's just relax. Let's cut here. Guys, coffee trouble. listen. Um, yeah. When you guys see me at the airport, feel free to ask for selfies with the bag. Um, the craftsmanship is is actually quite superior. Um, the rivets, the zip. No wait, zip. Okay. Hey, hey, hey. Passes the zips. Okay, side pockets, a little thingy majig, because I always lose my keys. So it's, it, that's what it's for, yeah? Yeah, it's for keys. It's like guys, people who make clothes, skirts with no pockets. Like, or like a toilet, a public toilet that doesn't have a place to hook your bag. Like, what the fuck are you supposed to do? Oh God, that back is so you're like trying to pee. You, want, you don't want to fucking, you know, sit on the chair, you're holding your bag, you need to get tissue, miriri, oh. I love that, I love that. Thanks, Banks. <laughs> and on that note, good night. Yeah, thank you so much for joining Bye. us on this episode of Dead Radio. With this special guest, we out. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs>